Hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you today at the Independent Hospital Pricing Authority Conference. My name is Ross Crawford. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon who works in public practice at Prince Charles Hospital in private practice at um, the St. Vincent's Hospital Northside. And I have a chair in orthopaedic research at the Queensland University of Technology. I'm also a consultant for Stryker. And this combination of skills mean I have an understanding of the public and private sector, industry and academia. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about two things that can make massive differences to healthcare systems, but are really underutilized in Australia. The first is big data. And on the bottom right of the screen, you'll see a picture of the Australian Orthopedic Association National Joint Replacement Registry. This is now 20 years old, and we have information on every hip and knee replacement done in Australia for the last 20 years and shoulders for around the last 10. And this data is driving change through the healthcare system. On your left is a robot, um, and robotic technology is starting to really change what we're doing as surgeons. And we're seeing it with abdominal surgery um, and orthopedic surgery principally. I'm gonna to talk to you a lot today about data and focused around knee replacements. But don't be scared by the thought that this is an orthopedic lecture. This is more, we're gonna use knees as an example of what we're doing wrong and right and why we should be open to data and technology. Now, if we start with technology, sorry, if we start with um, registries and big data, I wanna contrast what happens in the Nordic countries with what happens in Australia. So in Sweden, Iceland, Denmark, Finland, and Norway, there are many, many registries. Every person from birth has a unique identifier and their smallest registries, they're looking at particular pathologies. There's cancer registries, there's mortality registries, there's anterior cruciate ligament registries. If, if there's a medical intervention, there's a registry. And they can talk to each other. You can put a cancer registry with a mortality registry and work out survivorships and work out what treatments are working. And everyone in the countries accept this. No one has a problem with it. And in Finland, it's been around for since 1530, that the population data, unique identifier, and we can start to be linked to, to others. And these are world leading and they drive change. If you look at Sweden, they have 104 national registries on mostly medical outcomes. Australia has one, uh, the AOA Joint Replacement Registry, which I just showed you, is the only truly national registry in the country. So we're flying completely blind with healthcare. We have no idea what our outcomes are for cardiac intervention, transplantation, for intervention for diabetes. There are some state-based registries. There's some data that hospitals gather, but there's no complete rigid registry that tells us what is happening in our healthcare systems. So we're actually flying blind. Um, and to think that we're delivering billions of dollars worth of healthcare with no idea of their outcomes because we don't know what's going on um, really beggars belief. But still governments won't dare to talk about registries and de-identified medical data. It's the future and we really need to start to face up to it. Now the Australian Orthopaedic Registry, as I said, has been around for many years. And one of the things it presents are these survivorship curves. They don't need, this doesn't need to mean a lot to you, but essentially you can see here, we've got 20 year data on knee replacements and we can look at the failure rate. And the lower you are down the curve, the better you're doing. And with time, people are starting to look at these curves and say, my technique's not as good as another technique, so therefore I need to change my technique. Interestingly, 
health insurers, hospitals, nobody looks at this data. Nobody makes decisions on implant choices on this data and nobody um, has any oversight of what we're doing. We don't have to change. We don't have to do what's best. What this one shows you is that since this robotic system was introduced, the revision rate has plummeted. And it's probably about half at four years. And you can see your risk ratio here is 0.48, which means that truly at one and a half years, you've halved your revision rate. Now that might not sound like a lot, but there were 60,000 knee replacements done in Australia last year. If you can reduce the revision rate by 1%, that's 600 revisions that aren't performed. And 600 revisions cost about $60 million. That's 600 operations that people have to go through that they wouldn't have to go through. That's 600 operations that are taking surgical time where other people can't be treated. So when we're dealing with such big numbers, things that, that are driving improved outcomes should be used to free up resources. And we should be making informed decisions with big data about whether to introduce new technology. Um, a, a robot costs somewhere in the order of one to $2 million. It's a big capital investment, but they'll pay for themselves incredibly quickly if we, um, if we, if we do, uh, if we are showing changes. And look, not all technology will be good. Some will not drive change. And so, but we need to know. If we introduce new technology, we need to know whether it's working or not. And again, with the Da Vinci, there's nothing. There's no national registry on outcomes. Um, everyone's just saying things are better. In orthopedics, we're lucky to have this and we can make some hard decisions and we should be driving healthcare and we should be making investments in technology that works. The other one to talk about is partial knee replacement. Now, partial knee replacement, you can see in the top right screen, just replaces usually the inside half of your knee. Uh, it's a quicker operation to recover from. It um, has a lower morbidity and a lower mortality. And it was quite popular a number of years ago. It actually became unpopular because it was very difficult to perform. And the failure rates were, were quite high and probably double that of total knee replacement. So it didn't become a very... Um, reasonable question to ask that. So people went away from it and it basically started to die a death. At the peak of its um, use, there were about 13% of knees in Australia were done as partial knees rather than, than total knees. Now we've done some costings on this. And if we now see that the partial knee here is pretty much the same as a total knee revision, then it becomes a reasonable conversation to start to consider to use it again. We did a study at a hospital where we looked at 120 partial knees and cross uh, referenced them with 120 total knees. And in essence, we saved about $7,000 per case to the healthcare system with implant costs, um, length of stay, all the other things in the system. So the system was saving $7,000. The surgeon, wasn't taking a hit. The hospital was taking most of the hit by the robot, but the whole healthcare system saved about $7,000 a case. So if we put that across the 60,000 knee replacements and say 34% or 13% of those are partial knees, we'd have 8,400 partial knees a year, which would save the healthcare system um, approximately $60 billion in, um, sorry, $60 million in, um, in healthcare costs across 12 months. I'm not saying that should happen. We may never go back to those rates, but this is the sort of conversation health economists, surgeons, hospitals, providers need to start having. So to conclude, it's really quite scary that we have no idea what's happening in Australia to our patients. And there's no drive from anybody to change that. 
Big data is going to be the driver of change. Everyone knows big data is important. Look at Google, look at Facebook, look at everything that's happening. It's all big data. And we've got to come to terms with using big de-identified data to change healthcare systems. And this, again, this Mako robot, there's 57 of them in Australia, and there's five in the public sector. And so governments just aren't investing in these new technologies, which means the junior doctors are doing operations that have a higher failure rate because they don't have access to technology. And governments are saying, we're not going to invest in this technology because it costs money. But hospital budgets are enormous. And if something actually works and saves money in the long run, we need to be encouraging people to invest. I said earlier that not only new technologies will be advancement, but big data can identify this early. And we can't just go, oh, that's a robot. That's a robot. They're the same. It's not like saying a Mercedes and a Mini are the same. Thing. They're not interchangeable. Every system needs to be looked at in its own way. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of thought. Um, and I look forward to taking any questions. Thank you.